Hare Krishna and thank you all very much for joining us again uh, on this important and I do hope transformative uh, call. Mm. Life and Bhakti, uh, the title suggests that we do not do Bhakti mechanically. A life and Bhakti, uh, this title suggests that we are really fully alive uh, in our devotional practices. And uh, mm, I wanted to give all of you something which is, in my humble opinion, and according to the experiences of those who have followed this method, uh, an important key to open the treasures of bhakti to us. And that is to do uh, the practices of bhakti intentionally from a place which we could call the sacred space. In our mm, sessions so far, we have uh, discussed how this is uh, to be done and from the feedback which I hear and which I get, those who are actually able to implement this teaching, they do see uh, something which up till now was hidden behind the horizon. It was a hope to one day get there, but it was not, uh, a not yet fulfilled hope. I would just like to go with you through what we have done so far and then mm, go into uh, today's subject matter. In the first session we learned to enter the sacred space of our heart before doing any devotional activity. That, that comes from Jiva Goswami who says before you do a devotional activity, not afterwards, uh, before and you make a con this a conscious offering for, uh, I'm doing this now for you, Krishna. And you go with that consciousness right into the activity. So you, uh, there are three steps you need to do. Uh, first, come to the understanding that you are an eternal soul. That is called Sambandha Gyan. Uh, then that you are living with the Lord right in your heart. Uh, Krishna, who is observing you, is right with you. And uh, finally, you offer your devotional activities uh, with this perspective to Krishna. Here I am, your eternal servant. I'm now going into my day uh, where I will do this and this and this for your pleasure. And while you act, you remain mindful of this. Let me give you an example. Now, I got up this morning uh, and uh, 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 I have a few services today on my list. Uh, it started with chanting uh, the holy names and then I was, in the meantime, mm, studying devotional literature. Then I was preparing a few notes for upcoming seminars. And then I was mm, uh, going through the meditation. We will really today kidnap all of you from your rooms. <laughs> yes, uh, no more America for a, few for a few minutes and we'll bring you right to the banks of the sacred river Jamuna by, you will see, it's a surprise. Uh, so I was preparing a few things and also then in the afternoon, I put all this in my mind and then now I'm offering it uh, for Krishna. I'm here sitting with you, but in my heart I'm thinking, uh, this is my service today to Krishna, it's one of my services to Krishna and the Vaishnavas to give this fifth session of Mathura Vasa. And anything else I do today, 
I do it with that consciousness. So in the second session, uh, we learned to apply one side effect from the sacred space meditation. We learned the Shakshit Vena position. Uh, that is how important it is to be an observer in our life who does not just react, but who views the life from a neutral position and then finds out what is the best for me to do. This is especially important in Sadhu Sangha. So many devotional meetings have become not so devotional <laughs> because uh, those who have participated in this meeting have somehow lost the spiritual position and became active and reactive, calling, uh, uh, becoming heated, saying things, thinking things, acting things, uh, things which should not have, uh, be done because they were pulled out of their inner space uh, where they are observing everything and deciding what is best. So in Sadhu Sangha you really create a space we learned between you and the other. Mm, uh, in that space you meditate the Krishna is there in the heart of every one of my viewers, I want to do this uh, uh, very practical, then you listen attentively what the other says and maybe more, uh, more important, you listen what they don't say. <laughs> that my, those of you who are married, this will save your marriage. Listen to what your wife say but listen also to what she does not say. Uh, most of the things she will not say immediately. Uh, and uh, then you will have whoa, a very good devotional, spiritual uh, 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 relationship all the time. Share about Krishna. When you want to have Sadhu Sangha, share about Krishna. Read sacred scriptures together. Sing Kirtan. Speak about your realization. Encourage others and uplift their Krishna consciousness. And in this way, we did all the practices from a deeper space, uh, which will open us to new uh, dimensions. For instance, this next session, third session, we did on Nam Kirtan. There we learned to keep the vibration of the holy name within our heart to keep Krishna within our heart. And we learn to bring our mind back from wherever it wandered. And in the fourth session, Bhagavad Shravan, uh, we learned uh, a four-step process, which I always do when I read. First, Shravan, that is like gathering the information. Mananaha, you reflect about what you have heard. Nididyasan, you apply it in your life. And Vandanam, you ask for, uh, you, you turn in prayer to Krishna. There is a, was a Chinese emperor. I heard he was very successful in keeping a vast empire together. And he took every morning not that I'm saying you need to do this, a bath in a golden ba bathing tub. Now on the side of the golden, golden bathing tub, with, within reading distance, he had engraved one sentence. It said, a life which is not reflected is not worth living. I think it is a nice uh, statement. We hear so many informations during the day. We see so many things. We are in a uh, 
uh, uh, age of mass destruction weapons. I think it's a very good uh, definition. I once heard this from His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj, mass destruction. So you, whatever is important uh, from all these informations, you have to take it and reflect about it, especially when it comes to those uh, informations from the Shastras. If you just read it, it will go in one ear or one, one part of the brain, it will go in if you read it and go out the other part. Reflection and then application, so important. Uh, remember, my dear de devotees, remember, my dear listeners and viewers and also the skeptics, yes, everyone is welcome. Uh, you have to learn in your devotional practice to pay attention because only from attention comes attraction to what you do and from attraction comes finally attachment, that you remain attached to the spiritual life. If you are not paying attention but you are attract, uh, distracted, uh, then you will develop a disinterest in what you do and finally this disinterest will bring you to disengagement. Your body may still be there but ugh, your mind is over the seven hills as we say in Germany. <laughs> it's not there any longer. Good. Now we will move to a subject matter which I think will give you great joy in your heart. It will be very good for, for you. Uh, this subject is um, um, Mathura Mandala Stiti uh, or Mathura Vasa. It is to live in the holy space, in the Dham. Either physically, as you do when you go on pilgrimage, or as we will learn today, mentally, uh, when you think of the Holy Dham. First of all, what is a holy space? In the scriptures, it had, has been said, Dham can, make, can mean race. Prowess, it can mean an influence, but it's mostly used in this uh, meaning. A, a home where your soul is sheltered. It's a place which is eternally there. It's a spiritual place. It is blissful and in the Dham, it is also explained, you will not find any malice or jealousy. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that there in that spiritual home of each soul, uh, the tigers are not attacking the deers, or human beings are also very kind to each other. Mm. 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 Our wish, uh, our... Mm, uh, Rupa Goswami has composed a verse about the holy name, holy dam, holy dam. How is it, he asked. How is it? I just can't get it. That the magnificence of this Vrindavan forest, which is beautifully situated on the banks of the holy Ramu Yamuna river. How is it that it resounds all the time with the sound of buzzing bees that are attracted by the fresh blossoms of the Kadamba trees? How is it that this place is garnished 
garnished, ornamented with unlimited, unlimited sweetness. And how is it that this place produces such inexpressible feelings in my heart? Uh, one time, a mother of my friend uh, visited her son to convince her to leave Vrindavan Dam and come back to New York. She was Jewish mother, means very affectionately bound to her son, her older son, maybe a little possessive even. Uh, and uh, she really tried all her persuasive techniques. Look at this Vindavan. It's a place in India. Nothing can be predicted here. <laughs> I think when she arrived in Vindavan and got out of her taxi, her first step was into a pile of, of, of a cow dung. <laughs> and she went like, <laughs> you know, uh, we, we appreciate, we think very nice, very nice, very auspicious sign. But she, you know, New York citizen, oh, was, uh, <laughs> was really uh, unsettled. Uh, uh, but then she woke, uh, she, she went that night to bed and in the morning she woke up singing Hare Krishna. So she went to her son. Previously she, he wanted, she wanted to extract her son like a tooth uh, from, <laughs> from <laughs> Vindavan. Uh, now she said, I hate to admit it. I was singing Hare Krishna all night. Uh, so Rupa Goswami says, how is it that this place has such an effect on me that it produces such inexpressible emotions uh, in my mind? Um, this is the Vastu Shakti, that is the inherent potency of the Dham. Just like fire has the inherent potency to warm you up, time has the inherent potency to change everything. Uh, 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 the Dham has also a Vastu Shakti, an inherent potency that is, it brings devotional feelings, even in a non-devotee, uh, towards Krishna. Mm, Srila Prabhupada comments this verse. He says, mm, uh, the feeling about Vindavan described by Srila Rupa Goswami can actually be felt even by non-devotees. Mm. Anyone who goes to this district of Mathura, which is so beautifully situated on the banks of the river Jamuna, uh, will never want to return to this material world. You can actually hear this from devotees who have been in Vindavan or visitors. The moment they leave this magical mandala, this Braj mandala, this circle, they feel, oh no, again the material world. When they come to Delhi, they think, oh no, uh, Delhi is, the material world is there. <laughs> and when they come to America, they think, what a mistake I made to come just because I can get a good smoothie in America. I have left Vindavan. <laughs> mm. So, how is it? Uh, we will discuss this a little bit and then I hope to give you that feeling in this session, this incredible feeling of devotional sweetness that will go through you. 
It is said, just like Krishna, when he appears in this world, descends from the spiritual world, the holy dam also becomes an avatar. It descends into this world. Uh, it does so by the help of Bhakti Devi. Uh, there is a scripture uh, which Shiva Goswami quotes in Krishna Sandava. It's called the Mrityunjana Tanta. It says, Bhakti Devi brought the highest place of the spiritual world and placed it on this earth where it became known as uh, Gokula Vrindavan. Um, so it was Bhakti, the goddess of devotion, who took Vrindavan just like a lotus flower from the spiritual world and mm, placed uh, it uh, like a stala lotus uh, into this world. Uh, the Gopal Tapani Upanishad therefore says, as a lotus flower stands in the water, so the land of Vindavan stands on this earth. You know the analogy of the lotus flower, and I think you have uh, heard it many times. This analogy is used to say, uh, to express how something very beautiful can and, and extraordinary can stay even in an unclean uh, place. And I remembered when I was a Pujari in India, I saw once a pond of lotus flowers and wanted to harvest the lotus flowers. So when I went in the pond, it was full of mud, but smelling mud, and many snakes came at me. I must have been protected at that time by Ananta Shesha to, to not have any um, aggressive uh, con confrontation with the snakes. So I harvested a lot of lotus flowers. So I don't know where the courage came from to not run out of this snake-infested muddy pond, but uh, maybe I wanted to present the deities with <laughs> something extraordinary. Lotus flowers can uh, grow out of mud, sometimes smelly nut, uh, mud, um, aggressive smelling uh, uh, mud, but they are never influenced. They smell beautiful, fragrant, cooling. They have a cooling effect. So in the same way, Vindavan can stay in this world, but it is never influenced uh, uh, by, uh, by the uh, influences of this world. Now you might say, stop, 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 Maharaj. What is about all those monkeys who terrorize the rooftops of Brindavan. And Maharaji, you are very idealistic. Have you not heard that there are Gundas, some type of criminal people, uh, acting in Vindavan? What is with all the pigs? What is with all the open canalization? What is with all this money, 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 rupee, 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 rupee uh, uh, attitude? My dear devotees, this is an important objection which we need to deal with. I'm speaking, I'm saying there is a spiritual place in the material world, the Dham, but by our visual experience and other experiences, we have, we find sometimes hell and heaven <laughs> or uh, bad influences in Vindavan. Srila Prabhupada has addressed this question. Um, what is with the monkeys, the dogs, the stools, the hawks? Ooh, many shukas, many hawks in Vindavan. 
He has written, a materialistic man once asked me, why have you selected such a dirty place after retiring? Then he has answered, such a person cannot understand that the earthly Brindavan Dam is always a representation of the original Vindavan uh, Dam and consequently this original Vindavan remains as worshipable as Lord Krishna. My dear listeners, it's a spiritual place and spiritual things you have to see with spiritual eyes. Uh, this is ex expressed, there is two dimensions of the na Dham. The Drishyaman, that Drishya means seeing, the seen Vindavan, and the Adrishyaman, mm, that which is not visible. It's just like, I would like to give an example. I hope Dayal Goranga Prabhu, I can use you as an example. Dayal Goranga Prabhu, with seeing him with the eyes, I see a young man who does a lot of service. Maybe he does not sleep enough. He looks very skinny and emaciated. Uh, but is that all? Uh, uh, no. Inside is a soul, a pure soul, who has made it after a long journey through 8,400,000 species into this body of a, um, you know, American passport holder, who is now in the, has now the opportunity to turn to Bhakti. But that spiritual soul, is invisible to the material eyes. However, I can feel it. When I'm with him, I, I remember we, when he came to Krishna consciousness uh, and we had uh, association, there was not much time. It was so busy. New, New York means busy, 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 busy. But uh, when our ways would meet, we could feel, oh, what a nice devotee. The Holy Dham is similar. Yes, it is, if you so want, uh, covered with uh, a material curtain. And there on this curtain, on the surface, you may see the hawks and the dogs and the gundas and the money, 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 rupee, 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 rupee attitude and everything. But inside, and that's what we as spiritualists are concerned, is a spiritual reality. And it is this reality which we want to see. Uh, uh, you may, uh, some of you may know, uh, Bhujan Prabhu, a good uh, devotee friend of mine, and myself, we give each year a Govardhan retreats in uh, Vrindavan Dam and uh, we do this since I believe now 20 years we also have built a beautiful beautiful retreat center it's it's not yet totally finished and due to the uh, COVID situation there were, were, were some delays but uh, we have realistic hope that we can finish it completely uh, next year beautiful place at the side of Govardhan where we uh, so he always says in Vindavan Dam the spiritual reality is hidden as if there is a thin day curtain you know these very thin curtains which you have the sun can come through you can look outside through the curtains into the street, but people who look from the street into your window cannot see you. It's a thin day curtain. In Vindavan Dam, 
the spiritual reality is hidden only by a thin curtain. And you need to do spiritual practices in order to see through that curtain and see the spiritual reality. Whereas everywhere else the spiritual reality is covered by a thick uh, curtain, a real thick curtain, which does not let what is behind it shine through. In the Bhagavatam, Queen Kunti speaks about this. Maya Javani Kachanam. Oh, my dear Lord, you are hidden uh, behind the curtain of the deluding material energy. In Vindavan, this curtain is very thin, very thin. And therefore, anyone who comes to Vindavan Dham, even a complete newcomer to Bhakti, will uh, sense and feel these extraordinary devotional feelings for Krishna. A typical day in Vindavan uh, for an uh, a visitor could be that he goes to the shops, he needs to uh, buy no devotional cloth, incense, uh, different items, and he is totally turned off <laughs> by the experience. And then with deep frustration, he goes down in the evening to the banks of the Yamuna and he sits down Yamuna is the sacred river there. And oh, the first thing he feels is great relief. Then he sees the parrots coming home. They have been across the Yamuna. They have eaten grains or whatever and they return home. And his eyes follow the parrots. Then from so many temples he hears the bells of uh, uh, announcing the aratic ceremonies. He sees next to him an old man arriving who sings with a trembling voice, Radhe Radhe Govinda. And he sees the tears in the old man's eyes. He watches him, how he goes down the steps with fragrant, fragrant steps. He's old. How he takes his bath in the Yamuna. And all of a sudden, totally unexpected, as a big surprise upon receiving a gift, all of a sudden he feels everything is clear. I know I am an eternal soul. <laughs> I know there is Krishna, my eternal Lord. And he is uh, transported from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness. That's the effect. That's the potency, that's the vastu shakti of Vrindavan Dham, which we have heard a little earlier um, about. So, yes, the challenge for everyone who is there, who's going to Vrindavan, is to look behind the curtain, so to say, the thick curtain of the deluding energy and feel uh, the divine essence. So don't remain in external uh, vision. Mm. In the Talmud, there is a very nice little sentence which I always keep in mind in, throughout my life. And I especially remember this sentence when I'm in Vindavan. It says, you don't see things as they are. You see them as you are. <laughs> Should I repeat? You don't see the things as you, they are. 
you see them as you are. In Sanskrit, there is an expression, Atmavan Manjate Jagat. The way I am, the way I see them, uh, see the universe. Uh, For a thief, Vindavan is the place of thieves. <laughs> For a materialistic devotee, oh. Vindavan is a place of all these material coverings. But for a sincere Krishna searcher, someone who has made Krishna uh, his all in all, or who at least tries sincerely, oh, when the, the curtain opens, show, see the spiritual reality, see it uh, very nicely. Uh, there is this ancient verse, I think you know this, it is. Atashi Krishna Namadi Nabhavet Rayam Indriya Sevan Mukehi Jivaru Svayam Evas Puratyada. It says, therefore, material senses cannot appreciate Krishna's holy name, his form, qualities, and pastimes. I would like to add, material senses can also not appreciate the holy dham fully. However, when a conditioned soul is awakened to Krishna consciousness and renders service by using his tongue to chant the holy uh, names of the Lord uh, and taste the remnants of the Lord's food, the tongue is purified and one gradually understands who Krishna really is. The Sanskrit is uh, Svayameva, he Svayam, in his real nature, uh, spurat yada, he becomes a spurti. Spurti means a, 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 a revelation in the heart. No, it is there. By service. So therefore, when you go to Vindavan Dam, don't forget this key. This key which will help you that the curtain goes. It's seva. Uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says, uh, he speaks of two services to be done in the Dham. One is Nam Seva. You do, first of all, serve the holy name. Some pilgrims who come to Vrindavan, they chant a lot of extra rounds. I have information that when Prabhupada visited Vrindavan Dam, he did not go to Loi Bazaar, but he stayed at the Madan Mohan temple and uh, he uh, uh, chanted uh, rounds there. So from Sri Nam, uh, from chanting extra Nam, you will become a little elevated and you will start to serve the Holy Dham. It could mean to make a parikram, means uh, circumambulate Govardhan. It could mean to visit different temples. It could mean to listen about Krishna's glories from a qualified speaker. Various services to the holy day, Dham. And from this, you are elevated on the third story. Just by being in the Dham, this happens. That is, you will serve Sri Krishna's calm. Calm has desires. In this moment, we serve our unlimited desires. This is your program for going to Vindavan. Chant consciously the holy name. It's like enter, then you enter the lift. Yoop, it brings you one level up. Then you can serve the Dham the holy place with all its residents, and then zoop, it brings you another level up. That is, you will actually bring Krishna in the center. This is the solution of all the 
five processes of devotional service. Put Krishna in the center. Remove your false self out of the center. <laughs> and uh, nuke the false ego, they say in New York. <laughs> nuke the false ego. Nuke means to throw an atom bomb on it. <laughs> and put uh, Krishna in the center. And then, uh, yeah, then the real bliss will start. Uh, you know this when you do kirtan with the Ashoda Dulal. Uh, he dances for Krishna's pleasure, so joyful, like a seven-year-old boy, totally self-forgetful. And uh, he even gets an old man like me dancing for Krishna's pleasure. Now, my dear people, not all of us can go to Brindavan Dam physically. Uh, many ask me also, will the Govardhan retreat take place this year? And the answer is, uh, only on online it will take place. We, uh, due to the present situation of spreading infections, uh, there are restrictions imposed for foreigners uh, to come in and for Indians to travel. So with a heavy heart, we had to decide to not give the Govardhan retreat this year. But that is a good occasion to learn to be connected with Vindavan in another way. And it is here where I will uh, give you a little bit of training. Once Prabhupada gave a lecture, uh, it was in New York. And you hear on the tape an American lady asking him, are you here? You, it was a little bit like, are you here with us? Are you, are you not, you know, I don't want to even say it in connection with Srila Prabhupada. Are you, are you here? Are you with us? And Prabhupada said, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I'm always in my beloved Vrindavan. And in another uh, time he said, although I'm presently living in America, my residence is in Vrindavan because I'm always thinking of Vrindavan. Although I may be in New York apartment, although I may be in a, in a New York apartment, my consciousness is there, and this is as good as being there. When you study our Vaishnava scriptures, and I think this is what we want to uh, 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 thank you, Yashoda Dulal. It's such a pleasure to see your expert uh, uh, accompaniment. Uh, Mm. This is the whole point. When you physically cannot do something, it's very important that you do it mentally. You cannot travel to Vindavan, and I will give you a few tips at the end. You can be there in another way. Mm. Uh, Prabhupada writes about this. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Janarana, is Bhava Grahi. He appreciates our sentiment. For him, a path made of actual jewels and a path made of mental jewels are the same. Wow, let's stop here. You can offer to Krishna path made not of tarmac, that's boring, made of jewels, uh, and he will accept this as an offering of service. Though subtle mind, no, no, though subtle, mind is also matter. 
the devotees at liberty to serve the Lord either in gross matter or in subtle matter. This is something which I feel we need to all learn. That bhakti is something which happens in the heart. It cannot be just mechanical external activities. It is, and here you understand the value of this concept, entering the sacred space in devotional service. So I want to do this now with all of you. But before that, I wanted to say how powerful this is. I remember uh, maybe, t yeah, 10 years ago, I had a surgery which needed to be done on my leg. It was a complete removal of uh, the varicose veins. That was painful, but what was the problem afterwards is I caught a sepsis. Uh, sepsis means complete infection of all the organs in the body, at least in my case. I think there may be different degradations. And I was really at the edge of leaving the body. So one day, I received a phone call from Bhakti Charu Maharaj. He asked me, now I was in the hospital, how are you? And I said, every day I'm dancing, Maharaj. What? <laughs> we hear news that you are dying and that you have this leg operation and that the veins and all. I said, the news are correct, but I'm dancing every day. Listen what I do. We, we were very good friends, so I was not afraid to share what I had learned, mm. I go in my mind to the Krishna Balaram temple. It is closed uh, because it's very early in the morning. Somehow the deities are open and I dance for their pleasure. Because I know Maharaj, if I now give in, if I now become depressed, if I now think I'm the body, then I will not have the energy uh, to, to, to cure this. And I don't think it's my time yet. Uh, so therefore I dance. My dear listeners, there's ample res research now out mm, uh, which uh, confirms that you can heal yourself by your mind, mind over matter. But the moment you become depressed, frustrated, um, give up, poof, you are defeated. Uh, so here we learn that the mind, although it's subtle, it's also matter. And for Krishna, what you think in your mind is accepted. The devotee is at liberty to serve the Lord either in gross matter or in subtle matter. I want to encourage you to read this quotation in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, you, uh, uh, our, our, it was there in the chat box. Uh, Yashoda Dulal had posted it for us. You can also find such a quotation in the Nectar of Devotion. You know where that Brahmana is. We, we spoke about him in the earlier sessions who offers Krishna in the mind service. And this is particularly important when you want to have residence in Vrindavan. So um, let us now make an exercise about this for the end, and then I will be ready for your questions and uh, I will try to give answers. But for now, 
I really want to take you to Vrindavan mentally. Uh, we will show you now a few very nice uh, slides from Vrindavan. I do hope that this will work. Mm. Here, my dear viewers, in the first slide, you see uh, the Yamuna Devi. Uh, in the background, there is uh, a temple spine. The sun is in the process of setting. Here you see Keshigat. The old man is there. He lets the effect of the Yamuna work on his heart. He may have a hard day, but now he is at the Yamuna. There's this boat which can take us over the Yamuna if we so want. And a boatman. In our tradition we find many, many, many poems about boatmen who take us from one side to the other side. Often uh, the spur to master is compared with the boatman. A pilgrim offers her uh, prayers, heartfelt prayers to Krishna, to Yamuna. Other pilgrims worship their particular deities on the banks of the Yamuna. The Yamuna is a river it's very, very dear to Krishna. In the spiritual world, it is said that the Yamuna is covered with red and white lotus flowers. Some nectar searcher <laughs> is flying to the lotus flowers. On one level, Yamuna is a river. On another, she's a deity. This is Yamuna Devi. The banks of the Yamuna are full of sand and so soothing. Sometimes sadhus live in these small little mm, I don't know how to say, but you see, uh, uh, just on the banks of the Yamuna. Anyone and everyone at the banks of the Yamuna feels their mind is turned to Krishna in devotion and worship. The Yamuna carries our devotion, our expression of love, gratitude, or any other devotion of feelings, swiftly to Lord Krishna. She swiftly carries each one's mm, inner light, if you so want, bhakti to Krishna. In the following meditation, I invite all of you to mentally visit the Yamuna and uh, uh, experience something wonderful. I request you now to sit straight. Do a few deep breaths and mentally go 
to the holy Yamuna River. Sit down on her white sandy banks. Now focus on whatever it is that you mentally see around you. Perhaps you see the sun setting in the horizon. Or a boatman who brings pilgrims to the opposite bank. Just spend some time in the sacred atmosphere of the Yamuna River. Focus on the sounds you hear. Perhaps a peacock crying in the distance. Perhaps some sadhus chanting mantras, offering prayers. the sound of a bell. Bring your attention to your heart. You're now ready to take your holy bath. But before you take your bath, First take some flowers and a light to offer with devotion to Yamuna. Now you may enter the Yamuna slowly, respectfully. Take some of the waters in your palms and offer it to Yamuna while praying. O River Yamuna, you are the blissful spiritual water that gives love to the son of Nanda Maharaj. You are the same at the water from the spiritual world. For you can vanquish all of our offenses and the sinful reactions incurred in this life. You are the creator of all auspicious things. O daughter of the sun god, kindly purify us by your pious activities. Slowly move forward in the river. Then dip three times in the river. And notice how your consciousness becomes spiritualized, purified, cleansed with each dip. In your mind's eye, see something wonderful now. Shri Shri Radha Syam Sunda are worshipped on the opposite bank. There's a tree, there's the throne where the divine couple sit. There are 
there are associates. Turn to them. And if you wish, you may offer a prayer now. When you are ready, you may come out of the Yamuna Offer your obeisances on her banks and slowly return to room awareness. Thank you very, very much. Yes, we will now come back to our screens. Yes, there everyone is. <laughs> oh, you look changed. <laughs> the energy changes, yes. <laughs> you can do this anytime. It may be good to do it in the evening when our mind calms down or first thing in the morning. Uh, you don't need a ticket for this. Only one ticket. Your eagerness, your sincere desire to go to Vindavan. I will now end this session by giving you a few tips and exercises that could help you to be more connected with the Holy Dharma. I think we should somehow post them, but uh, those who are uh, helping with technical arrangements, I think they have heard. It's very important what you do when you first thing wake up in the morning. See, Vrindavan is not just some place of pilgrimage. It's actually the home of Radha and Krishna, who are our worshipable uh, deities. And when I want to be mindful of those who are most important of me, I do remember them. I think of them. Uh, I'm with them in my mind. So first thing when you wake up in the morning is remember that you are an eternal soul and you belong to Radha and Krishna only. The very first thing. The second is you may offer your obeisances to your spiritual masters, to Sri Chaitanya, Sri Radha and Krishna. Mm. This is what I do every morning since I'm a Bhakta. Offer my obeisances upon waking up. And then you can offer your obeisances to Vindavan, where they live, where they are eternally present, their home. It's, it's in the eastern direction. Some devotees to want, uh, who want to be connected with Vindavan are sprinkling some dust every morning on their head. Mm, or you could sing, mm, that is the fourth point, Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan. That's how you can sing. Mm. Then, fifth item, you can chant Japa, uh, keeping the sound vibration in your heart, not just being here, it has something to do with you, uh, while mentally residing in places in Vrindavan, also in Mayapur, of course, or Jagannath Puri. That is also what I 
do every day. We have an, with our deities, we have one background of the Govardhan uh, hill. So I'm, I'm sitting before them, I'm seeing uh, the, uh, our deities uh, at Govindakund, and in this way, I'm making my residence, mental residence, Vindavan. Also, what I would recommend is be a little creative. Put some nice photos in your room of Vindavan. Yamuna Devi, various temples, deities. It should be something creative. Be a little bit, why all this so, so neutral? Uh, it should be uh, some devotion. Mm. Uh, then I have a very nice prayer, which I will also post here. It's the Patya Panchaka prayer to Shishi Radha and Krishna. Bhaktivinoda Thakur recommends this. It is said that anyone who prays these prayers will for sure come back to Radha and Krishna in the spiritual world. Mm. And then serve the Dham and its residence. It is said, someone who serves with food, clothing and other gifts, the residents of Vindavan that are penniless, desireless, afraid of materialistic company and plunged into Krishna nectar, makes Vindavan's queen and king and queen uh, his submissive servants. Of course, we don't want Radha and Krishna to be our servants. We want to serve them. But the idea is if you serve those who are dear to them, this food, prayers, no, not prayers, what was it? Food, cloth, mm, let me see what items were mentioned. Mm. Uh, and other gifts, yeah, maybe things which are pra uh, practical. I always bring a few torchlights with me. Uh, there is this verse, uh, Vrindavan Mahimamrita, uh, you can find it in the chat box also. So, so that uh, service is very dear to Radha and Krishna. When you come to Vrindavan, Give some donations to the temples, you know. When you see a beggar, why not give him some rice in the pot, have something, uh, because Krishna uh, will help you. If you cannot yet renounce this dreamlike dream -like world, then at least serve those who reside in the spiritual world. <laughs> yes. Wow, that was a lot. And I think you could see as I was talking, I was talking about something really, really dear to myself. So now I'm a little over time. Uh, I uh, will end quickly here, but it was a genuine pleasure for you to go with you to Vindavan. Uh, I, I hope you could uh, get many things out of here. Maybe my most important point was, if you cannot go physically, go there in the mind. You might also read Vindavan guidebooks. They're very nice guidebooks. One is from His Holiness Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj on Vindavan, town Vindavan, but also on Govardhan. You can have this guidebook and leave through it. Very nice photos, nice descriptions can help you to be there mentally. After all, we want to go back home, back to God. And if you never think about what that place is, <laughs> then what is that? We, it seems we don't really walk our talk. We have to walk our talk. No? When we want to go back home, back uh, in the spiritual world, that means uh, to Vrindavan Dham. Good. I will end here. I thank you very much for listening. Now we will go into the question and answer session. Uh, I think we will do it again like always. Our Yashoda Dulal will read the 
verses to me, not verses, the questions <laughs> to me, and then I will try to answer as concise as possible. Sure. Thank you so much, Maharaj. This was so nectarian. So there's a few questions. Uh, one or two devotees wanted to ask, but the first question um, someone wanted me to ask on their behalf, that, you know, the keys that you gave were very helpful for seeing past the thin curtain of Vrindavan, of the material covering over Vrindavan, but still our consciousness is not so purified when we take a dip in the Yamuna, for example, we still see the floating pollution and the sewage, or we still see what's happening out there. So how do we overcome that and go past that curtain? Very good question. To cross over the threshold uh, of the material vision and go to the spiritual vision, you really need uh, to understand first of all uh, in your mind the spiritual reality. You need to have some education, you need to understand the, the knowledge, Sambandha. Then you also need examples. And finally, you need, uh, you need to just do it. I would like to give you an example. Two years back, I visited with one very nice person from London, uh, Jamuna Mai. We took a boat and went to the other side. And then I said to him, let's take a bath in Yamuna. He said, Maharaj, I'm not going to take a bath here. I have read all the articles that there is problem. Uh, the sewage of Delhi comes down uh, to, and is, it's put in the Yamuna and it's here and uh, so on. Please don't say it. Uh, don't ask me for this. I, I like you very much, but even your smile won't be able to smile this away. <laughs> so, so I said, you may do what you want, but I let me explain to you why, why, why I take my bath in the Yamuna. And I said to him mm, that this is, uh, there is a reality beyond our senses. That is the soul reality, the spirit reality. And, uh, and I explained like this. And then I said, uh, uh, and I will do it now. And then I went in the Yamuna and it's, it's always blissful uh, to, to go. And I bathed and I prayed and I came out of the Yamuna. And maybe I looked a little Krishna con more Krishna consciousness conscious than when I went in. He said, Maharaj, you are beaming. It has nothing to do with me. I said, it's the Yamuna. And, I, and he said, let me try it also a little bit. I will go up to my knees in the Yamuna. And you know, before, before long, he was taking his three dips. If this is not so easy for you, let me look. Mm. Mm. Yes, you can do something like this. I have a bottle for the unbelievers. This is filtered, oop, one moment, filtered Yamuna water. <laughs> and I will... <laughs> I don't know. This is a new computer of Gokrishna and he just nuts. I should not. Uh, uh, uh. I will just shoot it like this. <laughs> Oops, this, I have to unlock it first. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I feel the difference. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm joking now, but I want to talk sincerely. You can do such a thing, or you can take a bath by just sprinkling the water on your, on your head. That will be very good. Uh, 
uh, for you. I have my Yamuna water always with me and I ch -ch 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 spray. <laughs> so do something which is doable for you. If you have to force yourself and you can't break through that uh, external uh, perspective, Krishna will understand. This is Krishna. Is, the idea is good. If you, you can. You can take a description of the Yamuna water and take your bath there, you know, the sacred Yamuna, the spiritual Yamuna water. Mm -hmm. And mentally take your bath like you have done there or, or do uh, put some water on your head. Krishna. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. So we have six more minutes and maybe we can squeeze in two questions. Uh, Lina Tech Chandani, go ahead and ask your question, which you already formulated. Thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, please accept my uh, humble obeisance to Guru Maharaj. I uh, just wanted to ask one question. Like, since I am uh, practicing Krishna consciousness from last 10 months, and uh, I find it a little difficult uh, to apply, how to understand what is Krishna's wish or desire in our day-to-day -day life. So I really find it difficult little, to apply in, the, in my practical life. If you can please tell me that. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is very uh, clear, your question. Mm. Krishna speaks through audible mouths in this world. He speaks through good devotees. So, uh, if we have difficulties to understand Krishna's desires, which are sometimes n not so clear, it is good to consult devotees and also the places where he has spoken directly that is the sacred scriptures no? uh, there by reading them you will get a general outline of how he thinks how he desires and when there is a decision which is difficult for you to make on the spiritual or krishna conscious platform you can ask the experienced advice of devotees. Thank you, Guru Mahal. Okay, so the last question is from Vijaya Mehta. Uh, Vijaya, if you can go ahead and ask your question, and then we will turn to the final announcements. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanpat Pranam. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for taking me to Vrindavan and Yamuna Ji in a way I have never done that before, sitting here in my room in Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> Some old friends send messages like, what is the need of constructing temples? I get very disturbed because temples mean a lot to me. So what should I do? Ignore those messages or stop associating with people like that? Please advise. Thank you. Mm. Once Srila Prabhupada was asked this question, in Kumbha Mela, what is the need of establishing more temples? Maybe we should just repair the old and existent temples. And then Prabhupada said, answered, do you have a child? And the person, the man who had asked the question said, yes, yes, yes. Well, said Prabhupada, why did you have to get a child? There are so many children already there. And the man said, no, Swamiji, this is my child. It's a matter of love. It's a matter of love. So in the same way, building a temple for Krishna, uh, also a new temple for Krishna, is a matter of love, which is done by devotees. It's an expression of love. Uh, uh, and I think we can never criticize an expression of, of mature love. It is not possible. So if you find people who have, um, who don't understand this, I think we should try to give good explanations like this in a way they can understand. And then I think they will be uh, 
pacified or we can just do like this okay this is a I think there are certain questions which we cannot, where we can't find a same vision. Uh, so we can say, yes, this is our explanation why we do it. And if you cannot uh, see it like this or understand like this, then why don't we just leave the question? Uh, there are so many uh, uh, questions where we see things differently and we can encourage the people take from Krishna consciousness that what you can accept and what helps you to move on and the others do not take it as yet Th this was Prabhupada's uh, advice to those who preached in the university he said don't try to convince them of everything the students they're intelligent people they will come in their own time. Just talk about the things which they can uh, understand and accept and uh, be satisfied with that. Hmm? So, uh, like this. I would just say, mm, mm. let's. Uh, this is our explanation, but if you cannot see it like this, then you don't have to build a temple. You, you start your Krishna consciousness however you can, whatever in, uh, uh, in inspires you, like this. Good. <laughs> <laughs>